Uh, hope you packed your, your beach trousers. Aye, aye, Captain. Nagura, you're not Split. Jack. <laughs> Surprise. Now, you know, I, I was particularly excited to cast this match with you because, of course, Dr. J is in this uh, series. And should he lose the series, he will unfortunately have to be looking for a new raiding guild <laughs> after this tournament is done. But both teams right off the bat already going in separate directions. Sun Sky hanging off to the right, whilst Mythic Podchamp on the right side of the screen is going over to the left, expecting to see some pretty big pulls here on top of Parjesh. Yeah, we said almost all teams uh, did pretty much the same thing at the start here, where they skip the starting trash and then pull some of the trash groups into the boss and use that Lala's. As we can see, both teams pretty much doing the same pull, just going different directions at the start. Yeah, so you have to be careful here. Of course, we do have that Necrotic. Just a reminder for those at home, every stack of Necrotic on the tank usually will decrease the amount of healing and absorb done to them by 3%. So at, 100, uh, at uh, 34, per, uh, 34 stacks, excuse me, you will be literally unhealable. So you got to be a bit safe here. Make sure you kite around and the team will have to help you reset. Nagura, of course, you know, as a boom can how crucial it is to help peel off of the tank in these situations. Yeah, for sure. And then, of course, uh, you have those mob spawn that need to be interrupted or grip. We saw the DK just gripping in that caster mob or uh, one of the mages or the uh, the warlock interrupted so it gets closer. Of course, as you said, the uh, necrotic uh, is kind of a deal here, but skittish, usually not a big problem on bosses. As, uh, but we see no rogue or hunter in team uh, Sun Sky, so they don't have this misdirection or this uh, tricks of the trade to help a little bit out with the aggro here. Yeah, and you know, that can be a factor later with the what it will be likely huge mass trash pulls coming on later. And we saw some really good play out of Dr. J on this map yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, where he did manage to kind of sit behind the tank. And even though he pulled aggro on a lot of the mobs, they were still all heading in the right direction towards the tank. So well played there by them. Parjish now at 14% for Method Pogchamp on the right side of the screen. Looking to finish it off much faster than Sun Sky. Equivalent percent, actually not equivalent percent. Sun Sky actually has 14 on the board, 33% still on the ball. So they have a bit of an advantage with the trash here. But, you know, Nigger, when you're already pulling so much trash in the dungeon, it doesn't really matter if you pull an extra two crab packs when you already have 100 mobs on the table. So uh, certainly amount of percentage that they can easily make up later. Definitely. It's also very efficient. I think in this whole dungeon here, we saw a lot of trash being pulled to the bosses because obviously there's no... Uh, uh, Affix preventing it, like bolstering, for example. Yeah. So we saw most teams pulling very big trash packs towards the uh, boss fight, especially uh, especially on Serpentrix later on. And uh, they're going. Uh, team Pogchamp here already on their way to the next trash pack here. Method Pogchamp doing well uh, there by Sebs to quickly grip the Arcanist, and then A we grip those small gooeys onto the Arcanist as well. Kiting a bit here just to make sure those necrotic stacks go off, but keeping an eye on the Arcanist to not get too many of those arcane rebound shots go off, as it will bounce between players doing increasing damage per bounce doing well here to finish it off one of the snails has been pulled in the back but those aren't too much of a concern because contrary to some other trash mob most of other trash mobs in dungeons they will actually reset if you run far enough yeah so we also one advantage to be honest in this map for method pop champ is the warlock uh, because they have this low ring and then it's much easier to kite for the tank with this necrotic so as as long as you have aggro on the tank, then you can just run away, not getting hit by the mobs, not getting any necrotic stacks. So it's very, very easy for Saps to kite for a method patch. So, so I'm actually really excited to see Sun Sky, of course, now is on the right side of the screen for the enjoyability of those at home. They're actually going over to the right side as well, much like we saw from Team Omega Snipe in the previous series and yesterday. So two kind of unconventional routes. It actually seems like they're kind of U-turning now and going back. So that was their kind of big pull that we see teams often do after Parjesh. Not a pull we often see over there with the two crushers but nonetheless they do pull it off and now they're getting ready to head over indeed in the direction of lady Haycoil, where method pogchamp already finds themselves we see method pogchamp actually elserat is missing right now I, I believe they're going to do the same pull as they did last time where the healer elserat on his steward that might be one reason why he plays to do it he uses his travel form goes around and does a huge pull where he pulls a couple of uh, crab packs and some hydras and brings it back to the rest of the team. Sneaky little slow fall there by Sun Skies to kind of skip over that lake. Well done by then. Right into the arms of that Arcanist with the GUIs that we saw Method Pogchamp deal with earlier. But girl, you're absolutely right. There's going to be a large amount of angry trash uh, chasing after our good friend Elserat in just a moment as we see the amount of just nameplates amassing on the screen for Method Pogchamp. This is that huge pull that we were talking about. And you had the ability and uh, opportunity to cast yesterday doing this. Yeah, so we uh, we saw yesterday Method Pogchamp did the, this exact same pull and the exact same map. I doubt they're going to change up their strategy because they had a really fast time. If they wouldn't have uh, failed on this boat skip, it cost them so much time. Let's hope this time the boat skip is going to work out for them so they have this uh, really fast time that they're hoping for. I did actually talk to the teams and between yesterday and today that they managed actually to study up on some nautical lessons. So they should be good to have that boat skip just a bit later. All the mobs dying now. Just want to make sure you don't get too much damage from that Hydra who also just flops over right now. No 
problem for them. And this is what we were talking about. You know, they had 9% or so down in trash at the beginning of the map, and now they find themselves in a 10% advantage just because of how much trash they managed to cleave together there effectively. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to see that Sunsky, because uh, they had a lot more trash when they were in the first boss, but then they chose to do this uh, pull that we have never seen before on the right side, where they pulled a couple of big mobs together. When there's so much trash in this dungeon, uh, a lot of those small crap groups that give a lot of percentage, and they're very easy to kill for most teams, because most teams have a lot of AoE, so you just pull a lot of craps together, pull it to the towards the boss, and get the percentage easily. So it's uh, interesting to see why Sunsky chose to do this pull. Maybe they have uh, something up their sleeves later on. Right, you are, Nagura. They did kind of do a, a mini version of the method pogchamp pull there so they do have the hydra there a few of the crabs and the snail on top of the arcanist so i guess it kind of balances out instead of pulling the other half of the method pogchamp trash that method pogchamp did uh, they opted to go with that crusher pack unless both teams looking solid on trash percentage lady hate coil already at 66 percent for method pogchamp having already pulled her deciding not to do a serpentrix first that most teams like to do just because then you don't have to do those evil seagulls that come down during the serpentrix fight if you kill lady hate coil first yeah lady hate coil of of course, um, it is a tyrannical fight, so the AoE damage, the lightning strike does quite a, a bit of damage, but I believe mo most of the teams probably figured out exactly how much damage it does and uh, uh, prepared for it correctly, used defensives if they need to. As we see, Dr. J using his ice block here, uh, probably there was no defensive cooldown for him ready, so he just had to use the ice block to not die, but uh, they probably figured it out. Uh, perfectly for both teams. And Jay, of course, having aggro on a couple of those blobs, opting to keep them alive. We talk about this in this necrotic setting. It's a bit of a double-edged sword advantage going, of course, to the DPS. They do get some extra single target damage on the boss by keeping those alive, and Jay looks absolutely fabulous on the damage meters as a result of that ignite spread. But it does make the tank's life a little more difficult, as you can see Seb slowly and well kiting around in a circle to make sure that he doesn't accrue too many of those extra necrotic stacks. Sunsky following suit as well and pulling Lady Hate Coil as their second boss just now getting to 80 percent yeah this is where the slow ring from the wall up comes into play as you see saps has a really easy time just hiding all those uh, globules not getting hit not getting those necrotic stacks well on the other side for sunsky they actually remove the globs with the, the curse debuff they dispel it and get rid of the globs so, because of course they don't have to slow so the necrotic might just be too much for the black decay to handle if he can't kite them so Method Pogchamp at 15, I, I keep looking at this trash because it's such an interesting routing from Sunsky. They're already at 86% trash. They only need another 6% before they have everything they need in order to move to the Enchantresses. Dr. J having procced Cauterize there, making sure to be healed back up. Elsrad getting quite low as well, but no danger as Lady Hate Coil does go down for Method Pogchamp. They still have a bit of trash to make up, and much like yesterday, wouldn't be shocked to see a fairly sizable pull coming up from them here. Definitely. We saw Orange dying here for Team Sunsky, but they did, they did use their Battle Rest, got him back up, so it's not a problem. They should be able to finish this boss, but they're out of Battle Rest now, so in case uh, one more player dies, they have to form on the rest of the fight. But we see Method Pogchamp, of course, uh, already clearing more trash uh, on the way to Serpentrix. And as you said, they need a lot more percentage still than Sunsky. Uh, but as I said earlier, that if you pull trash towards bosses, it doesn't cost you anything. You pretty much just gain time, you gain more boss damage, and you gain percentage while doing so. So it might be a little bit overkill for Sunsky, because if they pull trash towards Serpentrix, it might just be uh, overkill and it might uh, have too much percentage. Actually. No, you're absolutely right. Mao Master on the right side of the screen doing nicely there to use his Transcendence, eating one of those uh, whirlwinds, getting knocked up in the air, Consuming the whirlwind and then transcending just back down to the platform to continue his DPS. Of course, we do know that those whirlwinds will consume one of those sand islands, which players need to safely sit on during the static shock. Otherwise, they will get one shot spreading out here for that lightning strike. Now, it will clip your fellow players, so you want to make sure that you're spread out for that. Do well there. Lady Hate Coil at 15% now. Should have no difficulty downing the rest of this boss, whilst Method Pogchamp has now actually pulled Serpentrix. Yeah, so they pulled the Pentrix. We can see also uh, a couple of crab packs being pulled. We saw the last time uh, Team Pakchan did this dungeon, we saw Elsoret uh, going off. As soon as the crabs died, he went off and pulled another pack towards the boss. So they constantly had a damage increase for Muscle Breath, for the Rogue uh, on the boss. There was a very good strat coming in from uh, Team Pakchan here. Of course, it is uh, 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 they killed Lady Hate Coil first, so they have the wins here on this boss. And Sunscott just downed uh, Lady Hate Coil as well, but Jan Fan does go down and for they don't have the battle rise available. Fortunately, that death was at the la uh, final parts of the boss, so it didn't really cost them too much DPS time on the boss. But that's an extra five seconds on the clock. That's extra time wasted to get the res back up after the boss. So all these small mistakes against a, a team that looks so polished on this map for Method Pogchamp is really going to cost them in the end. 
Definitely. We see Serpentrix uh, already submerged for Team Pogchamp here on 66%. Now they need to kill the two hats on the side, uh, their Kane hat and the Blazing Hydra spawn. And of course they also need to be interrupted if the cast go through. It does quite a bit of damage. Uh, of course it is tyrannical as well. It's 23, so it's probably, if one cast goes through, it's probably healable. But as I said earlier, the winds are actually uh, here now on Serpentrix. And sometimes the, that spit that the boss does, uh, if the wind comes into a weird direction, it might be instant and they might not be able to walk out of it so if you get one cast through and uh, a spit at the same time then you might just die yeah the spit does accelerate if it's going in favor of the direction of the winds and nobody likes to get spit on the girl. it's quite an awful feeling i'll tell you from high school um but here we have the seagulls now these are a problem you saw just on the side of the screen there for method pog champ one of the seagulls did come down because it's uncontrollable about dr j's ignite spreading and it spreads quite wide from the huge hitbox of serpentrix especially depending where the head's going to pop up so they already had to deal with one seagull now for those at home who don't know the reason we kind of hate see so much is because they disorient their current target oftentimes the tank causing him to lose all aggro for about four seconds after which they will turn around and smack dps like poor nagura here in the face and she will fall over and die but you can work around that by having one of the dps or the healer taunt the seagull instead yeah, we saw them earlier just taunt it out, maybe even root it. Of course, mages, as you said, have this uh, just passive uh, cleave around their target, so it might just get broken again. But we saw them dealing it with it really well. Saps never really had aggro from it, never got to the disorient, so it was good. We saw Sansky actually using their bloodlust, I believe, on Serpentrix now. It might have just been the mage because sometimes uh, it's a visual bug because the mages have used this bloodlust ring and have bloodlust more often than the rest of their team. But we see Sans Sansky already on 93% uh, trash. And, you know, they're working on Serpentrix right now. So technically, in terms of trash, they're well off and they're they're done. I mean, yes. they're, they're actually 1% overdone right now. Uh, so it's looking like it's okay as long as they don't accidentally pull any of the seagulls. Having a fire mage, of course, they are prone to the same kind of vulnerability with spreading some of that ignite by accident, depending where Serpentrix decides to pop up and say hello with the next 33%. Method Pogchant, completely stable here. We still see that God cauterized debuff on Dr. J. Won't have that available for a bit, whilst El Serat still runs around the area, cleaning up and picking up the last. 10% worth of crabs that they need before moving on to King Deep Beard. Yeah, um, I believe that Elsword is actually pulling those crabs to go to the next boss unless they decided to change their strategy because, of course, the last time they pulled those crabs trying to get them up to the third boss, but it didn't work out. So maybe this time around they're just uh, going without this crab pack. Now, Sir Prentrick's head here on Sunsky is actually quite close to that crab behind him, that, uh, well, more, more of a lobster, I suppose. Uh, so th we might have a, a bit of an ignite spread there, and it would be unfortunate to have to deal with that, but hopefully they could just kind of effectively clean it down. Method Pogchamp decided to just delete those crabs immediately this time and have a clean run over to the boat and uh, kind of all eyes on them here making sure that they rectify their mistakes from yesterday. They did have a bit of difficulty on the boat unfortunately with how good these teams are it ended up costing them ended up costing them the map so it should be okay. We'll keep an eye on that. Serpentrix now down to 23% for Sunsky who's already done with trash so they're not too far behind and this is where these small mistakes are going to start coming up Nagura. They have their battle res down, Sun Sky. Uh, at least the mage is on cooldown for now. Uh, they have two deaths on the board. Their percentage is done, but with how good uh, Method Pogchamp's looking and they get it on the first try this time, it's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, so they actually chose not to pull that crab pack this time around. Uh, just went the save way pretty much. Now they're pulling King Deep here. They, they do have their Blood Axe ready, but uh, they might just choose to save it for the last boss, of course, because they only they will only get one more Blood Axe for this whole run, uh, unless uh, things go very, very wrong. So they will save it for the last boss for that execute damage, of course. And we see Sunsky uh, kill Serpentrix as well. They, As we said earlier, they already have enough percentage, so they're probably just going to go to King Deep here as well. It's pretty close right now. And Jay doing well there, of course, to get aggro on that snail, giving them an extra 2%. They will need more than just that snail, though. Uh, and for a completing trash percentage. Wouldn't be shocked to see them pull some uh, of the crabs with Wrath of Ashara at the end just to get Muscle Bra and everyone else that can benefit from that single target damage, some more of that single target damage. Sun Sky now moving up, doing the old, uh, the old mount trick on the side of the cliff there. Of course, that is perfectly uh, akin to the physics in the real world. Unfortunately, the Blood DK does not make it up, so it's going to be a bit of time loss for them uh, as they kind of get him up. But D King Deep Beard now at 60% for Method Pogchamp. And at this point, all these small mistakes just keep costing them more and more time.
Yeah, so if you, if you don't manage to jump for the first time, it actually costs you quite a bit of time because people have to move around, have to wait for you. As we saw the last time, it, it can be costly, but uh, they managed to get up now, so they're ready to pull King Deep Beard as well. As we said, they do have enough percentage, but uh, if Method Pogtum actually just pulls a crab pack, if Elsa just goes, pulls a crab pack to the last boss, then it's actually not going to cost them time at all. It's actually going to gain them time for Master Bread doing this extra damage on the boss. So it looks pretty good for uh, Method Pogtum right now. Very clean run so far, zero deaths. King Deep Beard already on 41%, and we can see just how much damage Shella the Wallock does here on this boss because he does have this snail where he can multi dot and he can proc his tackles off the snail. Yeah, he's getting a ton of damage out of it. Now, the team doing well here as well to clean some of those absorb bubbles, one of the mechanics of the boss, making sure that they don't explode for extra damage on the group. Doing well to bait the quakes out now. This is a pretty large room, so as a range, you don't always have to stack every quake to be safe. You know, if you get caught out a bit, it's okay. It's more important for the melee and the tank, really, to just kind of maximize and economy that real estate near the boss so you don't have to start dragging it around hitting 30 percent now king deep beard has hit his soft range as he starts to plummet quickly down to the 20 percent range increases in attack speed and increased danger to the tank as a result but nothing that they uh, can't handle especially on this 23. Yeah, we also see Elserad here actually using Zephyr Secret as well as we just saw him cast Entangling Roots to proc his Zephyr. He's in melee, of course, being in cat form, doing 1.2 million DPS, actually. Uh, that's a lot of damage for a healer. He's probably running full D uh, DPS gear as well. Yeah, and we did see actually a bit of danger over on Sun Sky side. We already had the Cauterized proc there on their mage, and the Paladin got down to 4% health, getting that last second lay on hands on himself to survive. We see that Forbearance just starting to wear off on him now. So no deaths there, but a bit of a scary moment as they still continue to chisel away on King Deepbeard at 40%. Method Pogchamp looking great here right now. They still have 8% of trash from the Enchantresses that are currently guarding Wrath of Ashara. And I think, Nagura, as we said, they'll probably grab some either the Blobs or a pack of Crabs over to Wrath of Ashara for their final 2%. So one interesting thing here is that I believe Method Pogtum actually... Oh, okay, so they pulled two of them together the last time, and we can see Seps already running over there, pulling them together. And as I said the last time as well, did it, it is quite a difficult thing to do, to do two of them at the same time, not only because there's a lot of cast you need to interrupt, but also because there's multiple different abilities that need to be dispelled. And of course, only Elserat, the healer, can dispel magic effects. So if his dispel is on cooldown and someone gets turned into a frog, then you're going to lose quite a bit of damage. Turned into a frog, that would be just awful <laughs> as Varus does go down and they head over to the third Enchantress. King Deepbeard just now at 13% for Sun Sky, keeping an eye on them. They don't have to do any extra tricks with Trash leading up to Wrath of Ashara, but you know, these tricks are actually quite beneficial. The amount of single target damage gain is nothing to scoff at, and it's on purpose that Method is doing that uh, for themselves. It's not an accident that they forgot the last pack that they want to pull. So they're working on their third Enchantress right now. We'll be getting her down in a moment and moving over to the fourth one, which then will, of course, allow access to Wrath of Ashara the final boss. Yeah, so they're pulling a the last trash pack. Uh, I think Elsrad is already on, on his way. As you can see, he's not in range anymore. He's on his way to pull some of those globules or crab packs towards the boss. And they, of course, do have their bloodlust ready. So they're just going to melt the boss at the very start. Uh, they do not have a Holy Paladin. And the last boss, as we all know, has this one uh, big AOE effect that needs to be soaked or it needs to be immune. And uh, Bob actually works on that because it's physical damage. So not having this Holy Paladin to save one of the players might be a problem. That, but they're probably just going to group soak the first one, and then they do have all their battle rests ready, so they can just suicide one of the players and just get them back up. They can also just pray to RNGesus here that Jay gets it, he can ice block it. Uh, Muscle Bra should be able to survive by himself, maybe, Shella, maybe as well. I mean, Warlocks are quite durable. They do have, of course, that Dark Pact CD, but, you know, we'll have to see just how it plays out for them as they do finally pull the boss, immediately popping that Bloodlust boss, of course, we know does start at 20%, but it does have the amount of raw HP that the other bosses in the dungeon do. Typically, we see groups kind of to the right i don't really know why but the teams are moving to the right as these whirlwinds and waves start to culminate and start to take up a lot of the space on this boss yeah we see dr j actually getting some of the necrotic sex here as he pulled agra from those goggles uh, of course it's not very efficient that the mage is cleaving those because he's not gaining uh, a lot of single target damage while muscle brother rogue is actually gaining so it's a bit of un a, a little bit unfortunate that the mage just killing them off but they do have 100 percent trash now as we mentioned so now all they need to do is kill off wrath of the shara so 12 percent left while sun sky is still working on those uh, enchantresses but it makes him look so fantastic on the damage <laughs> meters and it that's does. all twitch chat cares about it look does. at that fire mage damage now one of the globules did get uh, banished on the side likely to proc i would assume seph is for shelle there so getting a bit of extra damage for him. Of course, Muscle Bra won't be able to really benefit from that banished Globule too much. doesn't really matter if they kill it or not at this point. They can keep it banished. They do have that 100% trash. Rafa the Shara getting to his 
relative 50% phase where he will kind of double the amount of um, tornadoes and waves going on in the area, restricting a lot more of the space that the players have. Fortunately, Jay is the one who gets the split damage debuff here, able to just block it off. So good luck for uh, Method Pogchamp there. Yeah, so we see Sanska, of course, also pulled the last boss at this point. It's on 17% already. They do not have their Bloodlust ready yet. We also see them uh, group soaking this first debuff. They do have a Darkness from the Demon Hunter, which helps quite a, a bit for them. And they also have the Holy Paladin for this buff to immune one of the debuffs. Uh, but Methopoctum, as we saw, doesn't really need the buff as long as Dr. J gets the debuff. And they were lucky enough to, for that to happen. And they'll probably have one more. And even at that point, they could just battle res them. Five seconds on the board. Uh, it's the small mistakes that just cost Sun Sky so much time, but uh, still an excellent run from them on the side. Uh, a lot of... Oh, uh, a bit of a damage. You scared me there for a second. Uh, no, they <laughs> actually <laughs> chose to group soak okay. one of the divas. <laughs> okay, you scared me. I looked over. I was like, oh my god, did they just wipe or something? What happened? But they're okay. They group soak. Didn't want to incur that extra death. Wrath of the Shara now at 2%. And for uh, Sun Sky, we're hitting that mid mark at the 10%. But it looks like Method Pog Champ will successfully take this first match in what is honestly a flawless very run. Clean. A, a flawless. very clean, flawless run. No deaths. Didn't even want that kind of voluntary death on the board just to make their lives easier with that split damage soak and Wrath of the Shara is going to go down and Method Pogchamp is going to take that first game but let's go ahead and hop into Black Rope Hold again Sun Sky needs this to stay alive in this tournament Method Pogchamp hoping to take the win in advance to challenge Skyline D. In Onagra, I'm actually really excited about this, and we were saying it during the break. This is one of those rare occasions where I'm actually excited to see a Black Rook counterpick because it is mage on mage. So you don't want to expect one team, if they perform well, to just kind of blow the other one out of the water. It's just going to be down to a good old-fashioned mage fight. Yeah, we also saw Dr. J uh, not doing the typical Black Rook Holds strats uh, that we saw in the regionals because sometimes on those trash balls, he, they didn't actually stop to get him buffed up. They just pulled the trash anyway. Uh, the mage used uh, his cooldowns, didn't uh, do the spell stealing, and it worked out anyway. So, and Sunsky did this traditional um, arcane strat uh, that we saw in regionals all the time. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, which one does better. So, of course, a bit of an advantage here for Method Pog Champ. They were able to use the rogue stealth at the beginning, meaning they don't lock themselves out of that 10 minute pot using the invis pots much like sun sky had to to skip that first trash that i'm pretty sure everybody in the world at this point skips nobody likes to deal with that except me to make people's lives hard both bloodlust having come out on the boss of course amalgam of souls having some basic abilities here one including the images that we just saw dr j spawn on the right side of the screen if you switch sit in those swirlies by the time they go off they will hit you for some damage and fear you that scythe does go out on the side of the screen there that will kind of chain punt you around if you enter that area and there is a frontal sweep on the tank but figure perhaps the most not intense, but important part of the fight is when we hit that 50% phase. Yeah, and so on 50%, uh, the boss just goes in the middle and just channels just pretty much nothing at all. And then he spawns those spirits, as we can see uh, on Sun Sky's side at the moment, that you need to kill. If they do reach the boss, then they actually buff him and increase the soul burst damage by 100%. So you definitely uh, need to make sure to not have any of those souls reach. As we can see, the DK just mass gripping them together. Uh, they uh, should to see one of the souls because as soon uh, if one of the souls does not die then the boss actually just keeps channeling and does nothing at all until he reaches 15 percent uh, hp before he casts the soul burst now we are in a tyrannical setting so that soul burst will actually hit for a fair amount of damage even at 15 percent so you can totally expect to see everybody using whatever immunities and cc uh, cds excuse me that they have mages busting out their ice blocks and what have you malgam now at 25 percent for sun sky on the left side method pog champ as well just now reaching that 25 percent phase slightly behind so we're actually seeing a bit of increased single target damage, maybe from Sun Sky, just by a sliver here as Method Pog Champ was first to pull the boss, if I'm not mistaken, by a few seconds. Good root coming out there from El Serat on that spirit. As both teams now hit that explosion phase, no deaths on the board on either side. Everybody does well to stay alive. We see, uh, of course, both the healers also doing an incredible amount of damage. Uh, the Holy Paladin, oh yes, Paladin is doing 1.5 million, while uh, El Serat is doing 1.3 million DPS. Of course, there is not much uh, group damage incoming on this fight except this one big burst uh, of the soul burst. So the healers can just go and DPS for the most duration of the fight. Both bosses now down for both teams, and they'll have a bit of RP here while these ghosts kind of open the door to the remainder of the dungeon, and they'll be able to go up the black work hold at that time, leading up to that spider wing first. But, uh, you know, Nagura, I'm a bit... Sun Sky actually kind of beat them on single target damage there. They started the boss a bit later and pulled ahead. Nothing too huge at the moment, but, you know, it could lead to... Uh, we saw how close it was last map relatively. It could lead to a few seconds off the board at the end. 
Yeah, I think it's just the, the strength of the Windwalker monk. Just Windwalker doing so much single target damage. Of course, uh, it's a downside as well later on in this dungeon. As we saw in a lot of Black Recall runs, that the Windwalkers are just dead quite a quite a lot, as we uh, call it, uh, dead monk hold as well. So <laughs> we're going to see how it goes later on for Mao here. Seb's doing a massive pull here as he runs to the top, grabs all the spiders, dropping that slow DD behind him to make sure he snatches some of that aggro while he can freely go up the steps. These small spiderlings, not too dangerous themselves from the melee, but they do stack a massively hitting, or, or ticking rather, magic dot on them. As we see, unfortunately, <laughs> one of the deaths already come up, the first death of this map coming up on Mao Master, the Windwalker Monk. Really big pull here from Sun Sky. Have seen them do this before as they did it. We are in a bursting scenario now as Gen Fan goes down. A lot of damage coming out. Bursting, of course, Nagura being that stacking damage on everybody as a trash mob dies, refreshing every time. So with the amount of small spiders they had there, it was no, uh, really no like, surprise, rather, that the, the mage managed to die there, not having that ice block available. Of yeah, especially because uh, the monk was dead as well, so there were less targets for the archers to shoot, for example, and we, we don't see them line of sighted or the range players to go away, because uh, usually those shoots, you can actually just either go really far away, I think I believe it's 35 yards range, or you can just go line of sight uh, whenever one of those archers targets you, but because they do have a monk, if they would all just go line of sight or uh, outrange it rather, then uh, the monk would get targeted by most of those abilities, and as we all know, they're pretty squishy so they choose to just uh, stay in range and of course it's a cane mage as well so he needs to be close and of course we are seeing that well done exactly what you just said for method pog champ on the right side of the screen as jay shella and el Sarat kind of hide in that hallway area just out of range of those archers making sure that they don't get any extra damage or perhaps killed by accident we also do i just want to remind that we have that grievous um a grievous affix here so anytime you dip below 90 percent health you're gonna get an increasing dot so it doesn't play very nicely with bursting can lead to quite a lot of damage especially when you mass pull trash uh, such as we'll see after Illusana, the second boss and this is where the kind of mage arms race is going to begin here the arcanist has been controlled by the blood dks here you can see both mages kind of starting to go super sane if you will getting ready to pump out as much damage as they can yeah, of course, uh, everyone who's not a mage is just sitting there waiting for the mage to, to buff himself up. He's pretty much doing nothing. Uh, and also the trash pack is probably going to die so fast that they're not going to use their cooldowns. They're just going to wait and let the mage do its work. But uh, as we can see, Method Pop Jump already buffed up their mage and they're going in. Let's see the damage difference between those two mages here, Kane versus Fire. So we can see Dr. J popping off there, peaking at around 34 mil health. I think they actually had less of the trash, though, as uh, Captain Shamalama Ding Dong finally does come down. Everybody's favorite here. Sun Sky doing a mass amount of damage as well, peaking at around 70 mil. I mean, this is just an amazing pull. <laughs> So we see them both, of course, doing a lot of damage, deleting those packs pretty much. Uh, no, you can barely see anyone else on the damage meter except those two mages on the left and on the right. Uh, so Matthew Pogchum just about to finish off this last trash pack, but they're pretty high on HP still, and uh, I believe uh, Dr. J probably lost his buff, so they need to just finish off the, those last few percentages. That he did. They don't last too long, those buffs. And, uh, you know, both teams pretty pretty neck and neck here. Most of the trash for Sun Sky has been killed. They're just finishing off the commander here. Method Pogchum following suit as well, finishing the commander first, actually, and then the remaining archers around the area. Both teams now moving up the side area to this last uh, trash pull here. Now, I don't know why, but this last trash pull yesterday in the BRH, as we saw, caused a lot of problems for the teams. A lot of deaths for just kind of this three pull here with the two archers, probably doing a poor job LOSing or ranging the double archer pack here. So we'll have to see how they handle it. Yeah, I think the biggest problem here is that, uh, as I said earlier, if uh, the range players outrange all the archers and there's only uh, one or two eligible targets uh, and if you get shot all the time as a melee and you don't go line of sight around the pillar then it might just be if you get shoot uh, twice in a row then you might just die so I, I see some of the range players just going in as we can see uh, on science Sky's side here so they the shoots actually get distributed by the uh, between the players while on method puck side we see them actually just outranging it and muscle is a rogue it's a little bit tankier than of course uh, a monk is on the other side of sun sky and muscle is probably just going to use his cooldowns to survive or use the line of side if he gets shoot by two of the archers. Flexing those muscles as they finish off the last of that trash method pog champ moving up to Illusana Ravencrest's area, the second boss, and uh, probably one of the scarier bosses of the dungeon. She does a lot of damage, but they do have, of course, the added benefit of the mages. So by the time they're said and done with the amount of CDs and bursts they're going to have, stealing those Arcanist stacks, as we can see both teams kind of taking a chill for a second, drinking and getting those Arcanist stacks buffed up on the mages. This is 
the bosses here, and I would say on Smash Fight, is really where we're going to see the team start pulling ahead of each other based on which mage is able to output more of that single target damage. Yeah, for sure. And Ilazana, of course, one of the more difficult bosses here in this dungeon, especially in Tyrannical, uh, because of those uh, abilities that uh, get hit by, ra like random players get hit by abilities like the Brutal Glaive and the Dark uh, Rush Battle Boss. And it's very difficult to deal with uh, with all this damage income. Uh, Holy Paladin helps quite a bit because the, the Brutal Glaive actually gets removed by Bob. So if a player gets a Brutal Glaive and the Dark Rush at the same time, then you can use this buff to remove it. And usually we see the mages here at the start while doing their insane damage with the buff. They just use their Ice Block to get rid of any of the Dark Rushes or the Brutal Glaive so they can just stand still and do their damage. Right, you are uh, Ravencrest down at 50% for Sun Sky, getting a lot of damage there. John Fun, I mean, we called him out yesterday for doing maybe not as much damage here. He's just proving that that was just a fluke, hitting 25 mil peak there. Jay a bit lower, though. Uh, not surprising. You'd expect that a bit of a lower burst from the Fire Mage overall. I think we talked about that before. Uh, Sours mentioned it, but not not too different between the two mages nonetheless. But in this case, on this specific boss, it is a big difference. I mean, both mages are probably done with their burst now. We're seeing about a 30% boss difference between the two as Genfana over on Sun Sky starts to kite the beam around in the second phase when the extra two mobs have spawned. An extra Arcanist, of course, has spawned. You want to make sure you interrupt it so those Arcane Blasts, similar to the ones the Mage is stealing, don't do too much damage to the rest of the group. Yeah, and luckily for Sunsky, uh, the mage is the only ranged player in their group as the Holy Paladin is actually considered a melee. So he's the only one uh, eligible to be targeted by this beam. And of course, when he needs to walk around as an arcane mage, he loses quite a bit of damage. But as he said, he bursted so much at the beginning that this intermission phase didn't last as long and the boss already died now. So they can continue on to the next trash pack while Method Pogchamp is still on the boss side. Sunsky now moving past these rolling stones, of course, not the popular rock band, but rather these rocks in Black Rick Hold moving up to this area now this is the area nigger that we kind of talked about again kind of dangerous for bursting so we're gonna have these blade lords here with a higher amount of health those aren't gonna die before all of the rest of the scavengers die and that's gonna be a ton of stacks of bursting on the group we saw a few deaths here in these dungeons yesterday on some of the players so there's gonna be a lot of pressure on yes pal the holy paladin on sun skies uh, healing and the rest of the group to prevent some of this as well perhaps with a pre ams or even an ice block yeah, so uh, here's where the Demon Hunter is very good for this bursting because he can just pop his darkness as soon as all, all those mobs die. And of course, the Holy Pollock can use his immunity to just heal everyone out. Everyone can stand in that darkness. As we can see, the Holy Pollock already bopped, uh, used his bubble to heal everyone up. And as we can just see everything now, there, the mage did die though and they used all this prep time to get him up. But thankfully, most of the mobs were already dead when the mage died. Yeah, so not too badly done by then. They did have that one death. The Blade Lord's finally going down. You see the tank kiting away. Those Blade are very dangerous for the tank that you cast that brutal assault something that you want to interrupt after the channel is uh, after the cast is done excuse me whilst the channel begins that way they don't recast it immediately one trickster kind of got away from them on the side for sun sky no problem for them as they finish it off and get ready to go up the more randomized stairs uh, the other one of course the first set of boulders always goes left right left right the second stairwell here is rng in terms of left or right for the boulders coming down and it's about twice or three times as long as the first stairwell but should be no problem for them method pog champ doing their own similar large pull huge amount of bursting stacks on the group but much more stable than we saw sun sky no deaths for them yeah, Method Pogchamp, of course, uh, are a little bit behind at this point, uh, mostly just because they lost uh, so much time on this boss, because their Arcane Mage uh, sour set early, it just does so much more single target than a Fire Mage with this buff. So we see Sunsky already doing this huge pull where they pull all the Dominators together. We see the Monk die. Unfortunately, uh, we said melees have a really hard time uh, on this pull because there's uh, this cast called Sick Bats, where all the bats will fix it on one player. Uh, maybe they didn't have the buff ready from the Paladin, or maybe it was out of range, so he died. And we also see orange dropping really low here as he has to debuff on him yeah i mean uh, you know unfortunately in this case the windwalker is the one that faced the brunt of the sick bats it really could have been anyone but you know we've kind of been harping on windwalker survivability he does go down sick bats will immediately focus somebody even if you're in the middle of the bats there's no warning as soon as that sick bats goes off you are done no interrupt they're on the fell frenzy though for the dominator so they're going to be kind of growing in size and doing a fair bit more damage to their main target the tank in this case of course as he's still alive kiting into the room here they want to make sure that they kill all this trash certainly not pulling it into the boss because they need time for their arcane mage to prep for some of that massive damage. Method Pogchamp right on their heels as well. Yeah, this might actually be the chance for Method Pogchamp to catch up because Mao, the Windwalker from Sunsky, actually did release almost immediately as soon as he died. They did have two battle rests ready, and in my opinion, they sh probably should have just used this rest because it was just at the beginning of the pull and it still took a long time. And it's quite a long walk, but uh, they didn't use their rest. They managed. Uh, they 
they chose to save it, and now they managed to kill everything off. Method Pogchamp just about to kill the last Dominator as well, and now they totally even. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure that was the best call. I totally agree with you. They should have just burned that battle res. There's not too much danger left in the dungeon after the deal with Smash Spite here, and they would have had one left over just in case that mage does flop over. Oh, yes, pal, on Sun Sky side, does well to finally heal through that bursting and the five stacks of Grievous that him and the mage had accrued at that point. Getting a bit low, but no deaths there. Both teams, once again, having a bit of an AFK and having some tea time as the two mages buff themselves up and get ready for the mass damage. We'll see if Sun Sky can once again pull a bit ahead with that mass arcane damage. And they're going to need to at this point, Nagura, because there's a three death difference between the two teams. So Sun Sky has to finish the dungeon at least 15 seconds faster. Yeah, it's very close at this point. So if it continues to be this close, uh, those three extra deaths will actually matter. And of course, uh, this boss might just, they have Bloodlust ready, so the damage from the mage is going to matter even more. We can see both of them using the Bloodlust, pulling the boss pretty much at the exact same time. Let's see how much damage those two mages can do in comparison. Let's see. <laughs> Nobody talk. Just watch. <laughs> Gen Fan peeking at it about 21, 22 mil this time. A lot of damage coming in from him. Not far behind is Dr. J, and there's not so, as much of a spread between the two bosses as I can see this time. Now, on this boss, they, there are other mechanics that will inevitably disrupt the mages, such as that AoE stomp we saw. Very dangerous for the group, especially in this um, kind of tyrannical setting. You want to make sure that everyone's nice and healthy and topped off before that hits, else you can get easily one shot. The other one, of course, is that charge mechanic that anybody else in the party can intercept and will do increased damage every time you eat one of those charges. But should be no problem for the Havoc to take their already at two stacks. I think you could play Dance if I'm yes. not mistaken. So they could just take it pretty much every time. Method Pogchamp not far behind. Last time we saw a 30% spread between the two bosses. This time only about 12, 13%. Yeah, this time the Fire Mage actually does quite a bit more damage. Maybe it also depends on procs and uh, crit luck and so on for a Fire Mage compared to an Arcane Mage. And other than that, we see also see those lines coming in. and. Especially on this boss, it actually does matter how fast you kill it because those lines might actually get a problem later on. If they fill up the room with that goo on the floor, you might get knocked into one of the uh, one of the lines after getting this big AOE hit. And if you get one tick from the goo, you might just die. So it's uh, the space actually matters, and the the, uh, the more damage you have, the faster the boss dies, the more space you're going to have, of course. Do you speak from experience with uh, getting knocked in the goo and dying? <laughs> Never happens. Oh, uh, Sun Sky getting ready to pull what is likely the whole stairwell. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday Sun. Sky actually pulled all of these Lancers and Swordsmen into the boss on top of the boss with everything. Whereas Method Pogchamp, I believe, did the trash, then the boss, something the like that. The other way around. Oh, the other way around. Okay. Uh, was it the other? Okay, so yeah. we'll see just here in a moment how they decide to handle this. We see uh, both Blood DKs running into the room, dropping their D&D &D to make sure they snap aggro on everything. Sebs does indeed pull Raven. The both teams actually pull Ravencrest, so really neck and neck here. Keep in mind, there's a 15-second difference in favor of Method Pogchamp on this map as they get started on the final boss. A lot of Lancers flying around. If you get caught in that Raven's dive, you are stunned for five seconds. No DR. Orange dipping really low there, but manages to hang on. Okay, so we see the mages here. De there's quite a big difference here between the mages. As we see, Dr. J actually doing uh, way more damage than the mage. Of course, they do have this Windwalker, who also does a lot of damage on those big pools, as we have seen quite a lot in all the other dungeons. So we uh, we see the mobs uh, slowly, slowly dying. Of course, some of them have more HP than others, because they are jumping around, so they spread out, and all this cleave is not going to hit all of them. We see Dr. J actually proc his Cauterize. Let's hope he does have his Ice Block ready, because he's going to need it for the big Shadow Bolt volley later on. If he does not have the Ice Block, then they might just have to use one of their battle rests. Yeah, that's really the danger point in the fight right now because that first AoE Shadow Bolt volley, as you mentioned, Nagura, hits before the players get their 300% damage, health, and healing buff. Um, so you want to have your immunities and CDs ready for that as soon as Dentalian Axe, which uh, spawns once Crutalus hits 20%. We can see the RP already starting for Sun Sky, both teams actually now. After that, it's just going to come down to the mages again. Can this arcane mage do enough damage and pull off the spell steals with the arcanist mid-fight during that Dreadlord's Dial and overtake 15 seconds worth of time on Method Pogchamp or not? But first, let's see if they survive this volley. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so uh, both teams uh, seem to be handling the volley just fine. Of course, they also have the darkness and the immunities to deal with it and the bear form, as we see elsewhere, just going bear form to survive. And Dr. J, of course, does have his uh, ice block ready, thankfully, so he didn't need his cauterize. But there's still some difficult uh, moments later on that can uh, be uh, difficult for the healers to keep them alive, especially with a lot of uh, squishy classes like a Windwalker Monk and a Mage without his immunities ready. The swarm that gets attached to uh, random players might be something that they have to deal with. We also see, of course, the Arcan is getting released in their intermission phase, and the Mages are going to spell steal, and they're going to use their cooldowns right as the boss comes back, and then it will be very interesting to see 
who does more damage and it's very close between those two as they're pretty much neck on neck. This is it, 15 seconds for Sunsky that they need to beat Method Pogchamp by to survive in this tournament and move forward in the lower bracket. Huge damage starting to come out from the Arcane Mage over on Sunsky's side as Dentalianax health just starts to chunk down. A lot of damage coming in for Method Pogchamp as well. They finish off the Arcanist on the side, obtaining their 100% trash, which Sunsky will do shortly as well. Dentalianax now down to 38%. Not far behind Method Pogchamp at the high 50s though. Yeah, so of course they're came uh, just shining here in this situation, doing way more damage than Dr. J on the other side. But uh, as we said, the death difference, it's a 15 seconds difference. So once uh, the Italian X dies for Sansky, Method Pogchamp actually has 15 seconds to finish the boss off. But it actually is such a huge difference. It's 40% to the Italian X actually dying. So and here 15 we go. seconds now. Start your timers, 15 seconds. If another Dreadlord's Guile phase happens for Method Pogchamp, Sansky stays alive in this tournament for a game three. And it looks like there's just no not going to be enough time, Nagura. Jay's damage just fell off too early, and as you said, that amount of health left on Dentelli. And your team, and those gross, gross affixes that you just would rather not deal with. But, I'm going to waste no more time. This decides who lives, whose story comes to a close. Nagura, salute, take it away. Hi, Nagura. Still not Jack. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, we do start over here with the DHT, expecting to see the same skip coming out of both sides. Once again, a bit of an advantage for Method Pogchamp here as they do have that Rogue Stealth available to them, not having to pop those Invis Pots right off the bat, moving on through. Now, we've seen once they get to this kind of Hippogriff Central area, we've seen some teams do some different pulls here, uh, depending on what they kind of want to mass together. I do want to remind those at home, we are in this uh, quite unbearable... There's actually a bear on the screen. I didn't, I didn't mean it that time, but we are in this unbearable affix situation uh, where we have Bolstering and Sanguine. Yeah, of course, we see Method Pogchamp pulling that bear while Sansky chooses not to, which is uh, one thing that the rogue is very good for, not only for this Shroud that is very good in Dark Head Thicket in general, but also for bolstering. If you just put, uh, you pull one mob that has a lot more HP than all the other mobs together, and the rogue is just going to do so much single target damage to just one target that they're still all going to die at the same time. Yeah, and, and you can see it already, Method Pogchamp, not too far behind, but having an extra 6%. And kind of unlike EOA, they do have that advantage. Uh, is, this dungeon is not as open in terms of what trash you can skip and what you can't. There is, of course, some trash you can skip and some you can't, but a lot of the routes oftentimes are linear that we see from the teams going through. Gets that sap off right away, and they will head over using that Warlock portal over the log. We see Method Pogchamp right there doing it, getting rid of those two Grizzlies. Traditionally, if you don't have Warlock availability, somebody in the group, if it's not somebody you can kind of invis or vanish it'll have to be the tank that just kind of pulls it to the side dies and then gets rezzed yeah so we see sanska actually pulling some of the casters here and the patrol together because they already use and we see orange dying actually here the demon hunter uh, i'm not sure if it was a debuff that didn't get this belt or if he stood in one of the swirlies underground but uh, they choose not to use their battle rest is going to get him back up but as i said they need to pull this trash pack to get past here because they already used their invis potion at the start while method puction used their invis at the start and managed to use uh, the the rogue shroud later on to go past this trash and they're already on the bus and already managed to use that bloodlust and as you can see here as well as uh, Sir just said they don't have the wall locks so they need to suicide one of their tanks now this was kind of a misplay for me for sun sky they spent the time rezzing the demon hunter here when they could have gone past the bears and res them on the other side along with the blood dk at the same time the dh just ends up dying anyway because they cut it so close there needing to wait to res the dh go to the other side and then get the res on the blood d again 100, it, it was well within 100 yards. They should have gone right away after the Bears and then just res both the tank and the D8 simultaneously. So that's going to cost them a bit of time for deaths on the board. Method Pogchamp already at 20% on Glade Dallas on the big screen here on the right side. Dealing excellent, pulling in uh, excellent with some of the tr extra trash that they pulled in on top of the boss, making sure it doesn't die before the boss. Certainly don't want that bolstered boss. Yes, you're right. So not only did they lose uh, those four, uh, the four deaths or this, uh, 20 seconds, but they also had to rest two times, use the Palin, get ready and heal themselves up so it cost them quite a bit of time and also their bloodlust timing as well so method pogchamp already has one minute and 20 seconds off their bloodlust timer while sansky just used it so they're gonna bit they're gonna be behind at this point around while uh method pogchamp already killed the boss and are on the way on the night to the next trash pack similar to method pogchamp though sansky has indeed pulled some extra trash on top of the boss once again needing to be careful not to kill it before the boss dies because it will bolster the boss too as we've said not just 
uh, not just the rest of the trash, and also the Sanguine. I mean, sometimes the boss kind of wants to do its own thing for a moment, get a cast off. So if you kill a mob right into the boss during that Sanguine, it can heal up a fair bit. As we saw, uh, I believe yesterday, one of the teams had that happen on Shade of Xavius, nonetheless. And that's a lot of percent you add. Big pull coming here out of Method Pogchamp on the right side of the screen as they round up some of these flowers inside the house, getting the grip on them, using a couple of the rock skips to their advantage to make sure that they group them all up together. Yeah, we saw them also pull the keepers uh, on the left side for the first time, but then Seps actually left that pull, went on and pulled all the other uh, flowers together with the dryads, did this spot where they all teleport to him, and Elsrat in the meantime taunted this keeper away so they don't, so the keeper stops healing the blossoms and also doesn't fall. Yeah, really well played by them. Some of these flowers are getting a bit close to the keeper, so I hope that they realize just how kind of on the edge of that bull string they are to the keeper. Should be okay though, they've done this. 14 hours a day a million times at this point. Method Pogchamp dealing with the rest of these blossoms. Good Typhoon there by Elsrat, making sure that none of those blossoms get a single tick of that Sanguine as they start to get more and more bolsters. We saw what a disaster that was for them earlier uh, yesterday. Yeah, and also one thing that we talked about earlier was Elsrat uh, using this Raster Druid here in this pool. And now we can see why. So they did uh, pick the DHT. Well, on the other side, Sunsky does not have a Raster Druid and they do not have a Moonkin player. So they do not have the Siphon as a safety net in case those Blossoms start casting while being in the Sanguine, while being bolstered. And we saw how devastating that is if one of those bolstered mobs gets healed up or gets just one tick by the Sanguine. It just heals uh, to 50% HP immediately and it has so much HP that you're not able to kill it so you need to wipe it up. So uh, t having a Typhoon is just very, very good in this engine here. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're very, you're right, Nigger. They're very much going to have to rely on either a single death grip every 15 seconds for the Blood DK or uh, the Ring of Peace if the Monk specced into it on that 45 second cooldown. Not sure if he did or not. I haven't seen the Leg Sweep or an ROP yet, just yet, but I'm sure those at home have kept an eye on that and will know better than I do as most <laughs> of the time Twitch chat does. Method Pogchamp moving over and skipping those extra two keepers right Right down to that patrol right before Ocard, uh, right before they have to deal with those GUIs. But Sunsky now finally doing their big pull of the flowers that we just saw Method Pogchamp do earlier. Yeah, so Method Pogchamp already passed this pull. They are pulling this one patrol with the flowers from the Keeper pack beforehand. They, of course, uh, skip the Keepers so they don't have to deal with that bolstering and uh, that healing from them. And, of course, not the Sanguine. And after this, they're going to pull those Wellers together. Uh, the last time around, we actually, I think they changed up their pulls a little bit because I'm pretty sure the last time in this dungeon, they pulled some of the flowers with the Dwellers. But this time around, there's no, uh, there's no flowers left, so they're probably just going to pull the, uh, the Dwellers by themselves. And as I also mentioned, is that their team comp does actually not have an AOE stun and they also don't have an, a solar beam or something like that. So those kind of pulls are kind of difficult for their team compensation as they're lacking that AOE CC. They do have the uh, momentary, I believe, destroying from the uh, Dragon's Breath from Jay, so that does help a bit. But it looks like they have more than enough damage to kind of deal with those tormenting iron traps, not to mention, of course, that arcane torrent for now going down for the team, making sure they get that blanket silence and interrupt silence on these mobs as well. Do well to cleave them all down. Sun Sky, another two deaths on the board they have six deaths overall and they're still dealing with that flower pack again we mention it every time in a bolstering scenario just that small sliver of health on those flowers that you see on the small screen there is actually a ton of raw hp which is why it's taking them so long not to mention they don't really have too much real estate i mean if they kite through that sanguine that they're actually quite close to it could be pretty disastrous My so the tank is forced to cut across there purgatory has already procced and they're finding themselves in a pretty precarious situation method pog champ uh, I believe, who was it? I think Elsrat ran to the side there to grab some of the extra trash on top of Ocard here. Yeah, we also see, of course, uh, Sansky does not have this Wallock for the slow, which is very uh, good for bolstering, especially uh, if you have these situations where you just have one or two mobs left that are bolstered so much. It looks like they only have a little bit of HP, but it's actually quite a lot, and they do hit for a lot of damage as they also bolstering also increases their damage done. So the tank uh, has a hard time here in Sansky surviving and kiting that without that slow of the Wallock, while Method Pogchamp is already on Ocard. We can see the grip from the boss that uh, picks up the tank does a lot of damage as well. Well, and we can see, of course, Wallock also pretty good in this boss fight because he can multi-dot those flowers. It's fun. Not to mention the uh, the bats that came in as well. So yeah, that grip does happen every 30 seconds on the top uh, on the tank. Excuse me. I suppose on the top tank. A uh, lot of damage coming in, and there's, of course, that AoE stomp as well. Now, we are in a fortified setting. It's not as dangerous, but when perhaps combined with some of the other damage going on, especially all of those... Um, the dots on the tank, which are a disease, of course, not a poison, that's what I was getting at. Uh, they do leech some health back to the bats and also do a fair bit of damage to the tank on top of the melee. So tank is pretty vulnerable during that crush phase of the, uh, the 
the healer has to be quite aware of what's happening, but they seem to have no problem kiting it well. And look how well they're handling the health of the trash and the boss to make sure that they don't get a bolster on Oakheart by accident. Yeah, it's actually also very difficult for them to deal with this uh, with the HP from those bats because, as we said earlier already, is Dr. J, the Fire Mage, does have this passive cleave that he cannot really avoid. So if they kill the bats too early and it bolsters the boss, it actually is a disaster for them. And uh, as you said, the debuff is actually a disease and uh, Residuit is not able to dispel it, so Saps actually uh, did a good job surviving all of that damage coming in on this boss. No problem for them as they run off and grab their most notorious enemies, the Goos which is uh, what kind of cost them the map yesterday, getting as much damage as they can in on them right now, but not too much as they did pull the Blood Tainted Fury, which has a substantial amount more health than the Goose. We'll be seeing a lot of single target work coming out of Muscle Bra here to make sure that he balances the health of the Blood Tainted Fury along with the Goose on the ground. They're gonna have to be very quick to grip the uh, Blood Tainted Fury away from the slimes once that happens, as you can see, they start dragging them away. Don't want any of that Sanguine healing to come. Blood Tainted Fury does die first. Everybody runs away to make sure that they don't proximity aggro any of those smaller Blood Tainted Furies that come out because they just don't give any percent. Yeah, they don't give any percent, so uh, all the teams choose to skip it. Of course, if there's an ability that you forgot to remove or one of your trinkets procs and it pulls it anyway, then everyone gets really mad and you waste a lot of time. So good on them of not pulling them and now they pull the rest of the slimes together. I believe they can skip this last Blood Fury on the left. They can just uh, have Elserad rooted if they don't need the percentage. Uh, so all they need to do is kill off those slimes and then they're on to dresser on. While Sunsky on the other hand just uh, pulled Oakheart, they really had trouble with those uh, flower packs because as we said, bolstering and sanguine is just very difficult to deal with and they just did uh, a little bit less clean than Method Pog Champ, but uh, they just had more trouble with it. And perfect pull here for Method Pog Champ. This time they don't want a repetition of yesterday's disaster with the big goo. They easily kill them all. Elselrad had already run ahead making sure to root that Blood Tended Fury, giving them immediate access to to Dresser on the third boss of the dungeon. A huge amount of whelps gets pulled immediately just above everybody's single target damage wherever they can benefit from it on Dresser on. And here we're gonna need to see as Jay rockets up the damage meter, looking excellent with his Ignite spread, which does not really benefit him too much for single target damage, but makes it look great on the damage meters. Yeah, of course. So there's a lot of heal, uh, a lot to heal as well. But interesting to see that Elstrad is actually playing Feral Affinity uh, to do more damage. But of course, uh, Guardian Affinity, uh, you do a little bit less damage, but you get this uh, Bear from Frenzied Regeneration and the passive damage reduction that helps out quite a bit on uh, tyrannical or, or on boss fights in general that do a lot of damage. And as we all know, Dark Red Picket is one of those uh, dungeons where the bosses actually do quite a lot of damage, as we just saw the downdraft doing a lot of AOE damage to the whole group, while Elstrad just stayed in cat form and did damage because I. I assume Sebs used his uh, leech and just healed everyone up while doing that. Yeah, I mean, Sebs even ate one of the ticks of the frontal beth, which will target the tank or the closest, highest proximity uh, aggro target if the tank's out of range. And there was no problem for him to heal through along with the group and that leech. Now, the leech won't be available for every pushback win. The pushback wins come back uh, come every 30 seconds along with that cave-in, 30 seconds as well. So he can only support every other as the cooldown on that consumption is 45 seconds. But it should be no problem. I mean, Elserat just pops out for a moment, gets a few regrowth out, gets a few hots out, and just right back into cat form. Dresser on already down to 5%. They're absolutely chewing through this health and getting ready to get into the uh, Shade of Xavius log area. Yeah, so they have 10% uh, left uh, that they need to do. The last time around, uh, Team Pakcham had some trouble here in this area because they, we also see one death coming in from Sunsky here. They're not, they don't need to use their battle res as it's only trash so they're probably just going to pile on him afterwards but we see method proc champ uh, doing pretty much the same pull as they did th the last time around but the last time they wanted to pull the bats towards xavius but uh, they backed out so after the boss was dead they had to actually backtrack and go backwards so we will see if they try to choose the same strat and uh, just hope that it doesn't uh, does it works out this time around or if they choose to do something differently here I mean, well done by them. Again, Muscle Bra making sure to keep a, uh, kind of an eye out on the health of that summoner there, chunking it down and well punted at the end there by Elsrat as they move on to the bat wave right now. Yeah, so we're going to have to see here exactly what they opt to do. The bats were pulled. Uh, they disorient the trash ahead of time right now. Dr. J with his uh, Dragon's Breath runs ahead. I believe will invis in the corner in a moment to make sure that he doesn't have aggro on those mobs. And uh, we'll see if they opt to kind of pull it with Xavius or not in just a moment here. Yeah, so we see the rest of the team just pulled the bats, got in comment with the bats, while Dr. J was the only one uh, disorientating I and getting aggro break. from the trash pack in front, and then using the invis, as you said. So now no one is in combat with that pack anymore, and they only have this bat, uh, those bats that they pulled to Xavius, they used their bloodless, and now everyone, of course, is going to get this damage increase from just having those bats on Xavius. And the full screen comes in for Method Pogchamp. That bloodlust does go off. Of course, you still see the timer because the mage is using 
using the ring at this point. They'll have their own bloodlust, I believe, in 25 seconds. That first Nightmare Bolt comes out. Everybody supporting Dr. J, making sure that they're in that area of pacification. Otherwise, he will be unable to cast for 20 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Muscle Broad doing well to keep himself distanced with that fear zone. Anybody who enters that red area will nuke and fear him for a substantial amount of time and damage. The biggest danger is here, the 50% mark. We already see Jay pre um, ice blocking, making sure that none of the damage leaks through. Fairly sizable hit on everyone, but nobody goes down and they continue on. And we also see, of course, uh, the disease on uh, steps from the bats doing quite a bit of damage. And as I said earlier, the Rastodrid is actually not able to dispel the disease. So Saps doing a good job surviving all the damage from Xavius and the bats at the same time. And uh, of course, they don't want to kill the bats because the longer they stay alive, uh, the more damage increase they get on Xavius himself. Yeah, and you don't want to risk that bolster, although I believe there's a bit of a trick with that as well right now. Nonetheless, they do opt to keep them alive as Shade of Xavius drops down to 15% HP right now. Having a lot of fortunate luck with none of those swirlies hitting Xavius as well. We do know that, oh, well, there's well, that one's going to hit. He has a pretty big hitbox, but if any of those do connect with him, he will gain a 10 second buff for 5% uh, percent damage stacking up to 10, but it's no problem for them, especially in this kind of 23 setting right now. Uh, Shade of Xavius does go down, and I mean, uh, just a really dominant performance on this map. Uh, uh, for them to take the series two to one. Yeah, and they also gripped the bats out immediately to not get uh, hit by the sanguine or bolstering. Really well done by Mephipak Jump here. Yeah. Solid performance by Sun Sky. Certainly something to be proud of taking that series of three, but Method Pog Champ gets the first uh, necessary win and what promises to Frank could be a very long day for them as they stave off elimination. Look to get not only to that top four and to obviously MDI All-Stars at BlizzCon, but uh, to take the whole tournament series, which is something, you know, they came in feeling that they were more than competent to do. Sours, uh, obviously this was just a perfect run. Uh, Method PogChamp really kind of exercised those demons from yesterday. Yeah, this, you know, of course, another flawless run from them. Zero deaths. The second zero death run they had in this entire series. They had, of course, the zero deaths also in the Eye of Ashara. But even with that perfect run, I do want to give a quick shout out to Shell's Angels, who still managed to go even faster than Method PogChamp did. So we, we see just how fast this number one CDEU team is compared to, to the, these PogChamp boys. But getting this perfect Dark Heart Thicket run after the run that they had uh, yesterday, you know, it's got to be a resurgent indeed. I am here with Dr. J, and the first thing I want to talk about, we actually had a Twitch poll before the match even started. Everybody got to vote to say who they thought was going to win this matchup. 92% of people in chat voted for you guys, voted that Method was going to be able to win. I, we do it in a lot of different tournaments. I've never seen a vote that dominant. What does it feel like to have so much support coming in for your squad? Well, the only thing I can say that I love my community on Twitch, it's just amazing. Every time we check the bots, you just see the pop champs, you see the method symbols, you just see so much support, it's just crazy. Yesterday, a little bit of a harder day as well. Does the support kind of help you get through, get back onto the stage today and just focus up and play the game? Yeah, as you could see, we kind of try to redeem ourselves in the matches that we, yeah, unfortunately lost yesterday. So going to Eye of Shara and Darkheart, the maps that we both lost, just made us feel a lot better today. And it's like a motivational push. Like we had zero deaths on the maps that we lost. So. Now, the other thing that I do want to talk about, you obviously just played against a team from the China region. It looks like you may have to play against another team from the China region. You have a very long road to that redemption that you talked about coming in in the losers portion of the bracket. Do you think you are the squad that can just eliminate an entire region? <laughs> Well, it sounds a bit bad if you say it like that, but yeah. <laughs> there you go, a little bit of confidence coming in. Is, are they going to be able to do it? I want to hear from you guys on the desk. <laughs> 